so I got this one and this is actually a just a pop-up with USB-C and regular USB charger so you can uh, charge phones and whatever and it's got three plugs all the way around galley and we are going to replace the counter surface with waterproof the new like waterproof um, it's like flooring flooring but it's it's not I, I don't know what to call it it's like Some a, kind of new product yeah like what you put for floor tiling we already have some here just laying yeah. on here just to see what it looks like yeah so, we are going to possibly replace the sink with a single space, not the divider, and uh, probably relocate this outlet. This was for the propane tank, which we're probably going to remove it because we're not using a propane tank on the boat. Um, what I'm going to do is actually remove these screws take this trimming off, I have to pry it off, and uh, use this material. So we're going to measure the space over here and cut these to size, hot glue them, together. Hot glue them and then try to get a, as best accurate outline that we can. Um, we'll have to figure out a sink situation first. Uh, we may have something where we put it on top to kind of close off the sink. We'll see. Um, and the stove is going to go at some point. Yeah, I think we're going to get a con uh, convection, convection oven, not convection, or a, like a convection oven and also a conduction cooktop. I mean, an air fryer, who knows? An air fryer, just some of those modern cooking conveniences yeah. that get the most, people have. The most uh, yeah. gadget with as many uses yeah. as we can get. Um, what else? Oh, backsplash. We haven't even... We haven't even started talking about that, but we're probably going to put something there. Peel and stick or something. We'll see. We'll go ahead and cut these out, glue them together, make a template, and take it from there. This is the before. All right, so we're making our template for the countertop. And it's going right along. I think we're going to like reinforce it from here to there. And then probably a couple times from there to there and there to there and maybe around the corner, like from there to there. So that way when we take it apart, not take it apart, but take it home, it's a little more squared up. It stays a little more squared up. All right. So are you done? I think so for the most part. Yeah. You've freed up all the edges. Mm -hmm. So now we got a template for that countertop, which is in no way shape or, or form square anywhere so template actually works perfect uh, for this because uh, there's nothing square about any of that it's all hand built on the fly so all right you want to pull it up and see what we got yeah. see if it sticks together and holds together in this case we put some reinforcements in various areas because it's an l-shaped now we can take this home to the garage and get a piece of plywood. I think we're going to get a piece of plywood, not too thick of plywood, and we are going to, there it is. That's a lot bigger when you have yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. We're going to get a piece of plywood, cut it to the shape of the template, put it over that. We're going to take that Shadow 2 um, uh, LPG monitor out and take that. I don't, I don't like the way that this plug is situated because if you spill something, it's on a, you know, it's on a countertop. If you spill something there, it's, it's no good. So we're going to take this out and then relocate that here with some kind of backing plate. So that way, this is again one continuous surface. And we're not using any gas, cooking gas here. So we're going to take that out. We're not going to take that out. We're going to have it continuous, right? Yeah, we're just going to leave that in. But when I put the new plywood over it, 
Um, it's just going to hold it in place. Because we're not going to keep the stove. Yeah, we're not keeping the stove. No. And that stove's coming out. At least at the moment, unless yeah. you change your mind. Yeah, I don't <laughs> think so, though. So anyways, we'll show uh, show more progress when we get the um, start putting it back together. Okay, took our template home. We got our tiles waterproof. Where's the box? Waterproof. Right there. Let's see here. Waterproof tiles. Home Depot, a box is like 60 bucks, and I think it's, uh, I don't know how many square feet it is. Five tiles. And this is how we're going to have it. Where's our sink? So, that's the sink, and that's pretty much, all. we're getting a new sink, which is just going to be 15 by 15, the size of the cardboard. The actual sink itself is this line, which isn't very big, but we don't need a huge sink but we do need a sink of some type. So we're gonna pound these tiles together here. Where is it, the seam right here? Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna mark it with our template and then we're gonna cut it. Um, and then we will transfer all these to the boat and see how it, how it looks. All right. Today we are getting ready to go down to the boat. We've done a bunch of work in the garage and a little bit of shopping. And we are changing out our old sink. This is the original sink that came with the trawler. And it's actually a well-made sink, but its function isn't that great. These sinks and these drains down here are like old and they're very, very small. And this thing's beat up and it's a little bit rusted. It's very old. We don't like the divided. We don't like the divided, yeah. If this was one big sink, it would be easier. But with it, two small compartments, it's... Uh, not very useful. Also the way it was laid in, it was actually done like an undermount sink, but this is actually a drop-in sink. But the way that they did it was unbelievable. They did it like a, a undermount also so that there would be a piece of wood that went over this. But that piece of wood is long gone and so they had like some kind of, I don't know, some kind of mastic or 5200, but it was it was a little bit hard. So they, they had done some kind of method to, to make this an undermount. Didn't Didn't look great. But it did work. So this is the new sink. This is off of Amazon. How big is this? Twenty. This one is 23 by 15. This one is 24 by 14 and three quarters. It's similar in size. Yeah. But definitely. No, th this one is 23 and 15 five, I think. I don't remember. But we do have enough room. We measured and measured and measured. Um, also, the way this sink is laid out, this is in the corner of the galley, of an L-shaped galley. This sink, uh, and the way the faucet was, it wasn't mounted in the sink, it was mounted behind it in the cabinet. And it was always under the overhang of the galley, so it didn't work all that good. This one is actually perfect, because it's offset to the right slightly. Um, and it will be mostly uh, out from underneath the overhang. We'll see how it is. Yeah, it's gonna work either way. We like this because it's off center. Yeah. We've got... This is our new... This is the new... This is a lightning deal. Yes, this was, we'll go over the prices here. <laughs> so this is actually, uh, this this was like 50 bucks. So there's like two classes of sinks, or I'm sorry, faucets, like Kohler and the brand names and whatnot. I've seen ones exactly like this and they're three to four hundred dollars. They're incredibly expensive. This one was like 60 bucks. Obviously it's Chinese made and I was, you know, looking at the, the price difference and I was questioning it, but this one is fantastic actually. It's actually very heavy, very well made. I mean, look at this brass or bronze uh, piece. You know, it's kind of like a, a space or a washer to tighten it against there. And all this stuff is actually pretty nice. It came with adapters. It came with all kinds of stuff. Um, the sink itself came with this hardware, little basket and everything. I mean, it's it's, it's not the most substantial. How much was the sink? Quality. Okay, so the the sink was 160. It was like with tax and everything, it was like $170. This was like $60, which came with this, this matching brushed nickel um, soap, soap dispenser. dispenser. Yeah. And I just got one because it has a hole in there and I just want to fill it. We may not even use it. Oh, we'll, we'll use see. it. Yeah. Um, pretty cool. So, and then differences in the sink. This is an old school, Oops. this is an old school um, real stainless steel sink. And this is real stainless too, but it's got some kind of coating on it. Uh, 
this is probably not 3 16 because it's rusted but you can see this old sink and then this is a modern sink and they put this um, mass loaded uh, sound deadener I mean it really works too so when you're clunking your dishes around this one was always you know kind of like bongos this one uh, should be much much quieter so and then also on our let's show this countertop here oh. this is all this is what we've been doing so this is all of our work surfaces for the counters and above the fridge behind it that over there is actually new wood that's going to go on top of it we also got peel and stick peel and stick backsplash um we're not sure what we're going to go with and this is pretty cheap and it's like 35 bucks a right. box of 10. and a box of 10 might make might be enough we'll see Video. All right, so this is that socket that we got. I was just looking at the instructions. Me and my wife both noticed. So here's the name of the manufacturer of the socket. <laughs> what did you think that was? It's Kung Fu King socket. Kung Fu King. Yeah. Not what you thought it was. You sailor people. Yeah. So we're taking out our Magic Chef oven, four top, four spot cooktop. I doubt it's hardly ever been used, but uh, a little bit. I mean, it really doesn't look like much much use at all. But I got to disconnect the gas line. We have no gas in the boat anymore. All the controls are long gone. The propane tanks are gone. All the um, hoses and stuff up top are gone. We prefer it that way. Yeah, we're just gonna go all electric. Some people don't like to use their generator but with uh, convection ovens and all that stuff they have these days we're gonna probably put like some kind of convection oven in there and just run the generator if we want to oven cook something I mean the generator burns less than half a gallon an hour mm. of fuel so I mean you know okay I'm gonna be coming through that door okay it's gonna be tight because this piece of wood still here Whoa. scratch the fridge don't scratch the fridge. That's a monster. A little bit. We should take it up on the dock. Okay. Okay, this is just plywood surface. And we're marking the markings for the uh, sink outlet. But that's where the stove was. So here's our markings for the sink. The outside mark is the actual outside area of the sink itself. And they want you to, according to the instructions, they want you to mark in inboard of that all the way around six to eight millimeters, but that's not enough, so I went half inch. To me, that seems like I should even go more, but it should be fine. This just gets us started. Yeah. Smell teak. That's why I hit a nail or screw.
this up because I can't quite get that. What a mess. <laughs> So I'm at the boat today, finishing up uh, a project that I've been wanting to do for a while now. Really looking forward to getting it done, and that was the galley. So the galley is about 97% done. I've just got to do a couple trim pieces and backsplash uh, and a few things, but the major components are done. The major components are the countertop, which is Home Depot Life Proof. That's the name brand is Life Proof. Um, laminate flooring in the style of tile looks like tile but it's totally synthetic totally waterproof um, and it's 24 by 24 inch tiles it looks good so the um, tile is one component another component uh, in this spot right here there used to be a up facing uh, two plug outlet that was facing straight up and of course if you were to spill something on it, it would take a direct shot right down the plug. So I didn't want that. So I got this one, and this is actually a just a pop-up with USB-C and regular USB charger, so you can uh, charge phones and whatever. And it's got three plugs all the way around. And then, of course, when it's not in use, it just stows. Um, and that worked out pretty good. I'm real happy about that. And then we have a sink, which was gotten off Amazon. Couldn't tell you the name of it. It's just some crazy Chinese name. Uh, but it's nice. It's going to scratch easily, and uh, some people complain of, you know, spotting or rust spots or whatever. But it's pretty cheap sink. But it also was one of the only ones that would fit in this space. It's such an odd space. There used to be a sink that was slightly larger than this one here, um, but it had two spots, you know, a left and a right compartment. So it was very unusable, and the drains were tiny. Uh, this one's more like a home sink. So it's got a standard drain, came with a little drain basket. Um, so this one's more normal. Faucet was separate, and this faucet obviously is a hot and cold normal faucet but it has excellent flow I'm surprised how good a flow it has because we have uh, newer pumps in the boat uh, for the fresh water and we have 150 gallons of fresh water but at the other faucets and other places the flow is very low uh, and the flow was low here too so but when we put this faucet in it has pretty much household standard flow it's got the two position toggle and of course it pulls out and it does swivel so this works very very well soap dispenser which really kicked my butt for about 15 minutes I uh, worked on a lot of stuff but uh, this thing baffled me for about about 10 minutes and uh, had, I thought I was going to have to pull the bottle there's a bottle under there that you fill up and then you have to screw it up in there and I was like, well, do I have to pull the bottle out every single time I want to fill this thing? That's ridiculous. Until all I did was just pull up on this. And it doesn't seem like you can pull up on it, but you can. And then you, once it's mounted in there, once the bottle's mounted in there, all you do is uh, fill that from that position, or from, from this top position by pulling the top. And uh, then this side also. And all these countertops now are very strong. The old countertops were not very strong and they were very old so they were a little crunchy, little you know, very very solid. And uh, there used to be a uh, propane stove in there. We pulled that out. There's going to go uh, be a microwave slash convection oven. And then up here we'll put a uh, conduction cooktop. So that's what we'll primarily use. We use it with generator, and then we also have an outdoor grill, magma grill, um, that we will we will use. So there's still backsplash that needs to go in. All these uh, outlets right here will be replaced with something to match the way it's kind of set up now. Um, so that is the galley refit, and of course we put our headliner up. 
uh, probably a year ago now. We did the cushions. Still got to do things like re-varnish this stuff, but we'll get to that. That's extremely low pri uh, priority. Nothing's leaking there anymore. Um, but uh, the wood's fine. It just needs to be re-varnished. So that's where we're at. Now, what did this cost? Um, the one box of life-proof 24-inch tiles. There's five tiles in there, which was enough to do our countertop. Just barely getting creative with the cuts and trying to make sure we fit everything together. Uh, but one box, I think, was about $60 um, at Home Depot. This uh, USB outlet, pop-up outlet, I think was also about $60 from Amazon. The sink was about $160 on sale, probably about $170 after tax. That faucet was only $60. It was uh, when you go buy faucets on Amazon, they have the Kohlers and the fancy ones and this and that, and they're, the faucets were ridiculous. They're, two to five hundred dollars for fancy faucets so I was like and then they also had these other ones that were you know of course Chinese made faucets and I was like well you know for as little as we use it I'm gonna try one of the cheap ones I got it and it's fantastic it's excellent quality um, and it's as good as anything else I've seen in the stores in some cases better 60 for the tile uh, 100 120 including that and then uh, uh, 280, 340. It was less than 500 dollars, probably more like 450, including some fittings and some different things that I had to get. So this was less than 500 dollars to redo this uh, this galley, and I'll try to include some before pictures because uh, it was a wreck. It was unusable. It was very dirty, um, and so now it's pretty inviting. You know, we're ready to use it. Uh, it's a lot stronger much more usable space and the sink is much more usable good water flow um, and of course as part of our galley we put this uh, isotherm fridge in a while ago I made that uh, panel there that has switches that control various things um, and a USB charger and uh, a couple other ports there um, I think that's about it so the rest of the boat still a disaster but I think I'm at the point now where I can uh, take a lot of this stuff off of here this was a, a big job that, you, that needed lots of different tools from saws to you know caulking guns to whatever um, but now I believe I can probably take about 50% of all these tools and parts off the boat. And then the next jobs are smaller. Like for instance this uh, Fusion Audio stereo which is going to go there. Um, I got a new VHF antenna that will have to be hooked up. And uh, a little bit of electronics. My autopilot should be here Monday. And then I can start to install the new chart plotter. Um, I also have a, a tack signal generator that's going to go on here to have a better tack signal because the diesels are notorious for having a not a great tack signal, and mine comes and goes when it feels like it. Um, so we'll see. I'll tackle that. Um, I think that's about it. I think I'm ready to start taking a lot of this stuff home. So, anyways. One more shot of the galley. I'd say that should uh, be perfectly usable for us. Very, very happy with it. One of the best upgrades we've done, along with the headliner and the cushions. So and very cheap not, not very expensive at all alright we'll uh, show some more progress later